Yes, folks, Joe Biden, some deep state cronies, and some other Democrats need to be impeached, not Trump. Now, hasn't that impeachment trial in the Senate been painful to watch? It's like pulling teeth. It's been nothing more than Democrats projecting their own corruption onto Trump. Look away from Biden, it tell, yells Schiff. Look over there at Trump, he says. But that is all falling on deaf ears now, as Biden and his buddies have just been exposed. Laura Ingram has just uncovered evidence exposing Biden Democrat corruption involving Ukraine and the looking for dirt on Trump going back to 2016. Now, she has shown this over three nights, so I'll start this off with part one. And now to an exclusive Ingram Angle investigation. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the entire impeachment drama comes back to one person, the whistleblower. Democrats want you to believe this person is all of a sudden is unimportant to their case against the president. We don't even need the whistleblower's original complaint. It's all there, clear as day, in the transcript and in these text messages. Given that we already have the call record, we don't need the whistleblower who wasn't on the call to tell us what took place during the call. But tonight, the Ingram Angle obtained exclusive documents that show just how important he or she is. Now, we got our hands on a batch of State Department emails from May of last year. The chain centers on a request from the New York Times reporter Ken Vogel. Now, you right, might remember he's the former Politico reporter who wrote this story about Ukrainian efforts to hobble Trump's presidential run in 2016. Uh, Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire. Kiev officials are scrambling to make amends with the president-elect after quietly working to boost Clinton. Oh, but that's just a conspiracy theory, right? Well, fast forward to May of 2019. Vogel sends an email to State Department official Kate Schilling about a story he was working on regarding an Obama-era meeting with Ukrainian prosecutors. In his request, Vogel mentions a name who some have reported is the whistleblower. Now, we have not yet confirmed this name, so we're just blacking it out for here. Now, Vogel's email reads as follows. We're going to report that State Department official Elizabeth Zentos attended a meeting at the White House on January 19, 2016, with Ukrainian prosecutors and embassy officials. The subjects discussed included efforts within the United States government to support prosecutions in Ukraine and the United Kingdom of Burisma Holdings and concerns that Hunter Biden's position with the company could complicate such efforts. Mm. On May 1st, State Department official Kate Schilling forwarded Vogel's email to her colleagues Elizabeth Zentos and George Kent. Now, remember him? He was one of the House Democrats' all-star impeachment witnesses. Now, according to Schilling's email, Kent has previously been a source for Vogel. I wonder how many times. I was thinking about that today, but I digress. Now, follow-up emails reveal the conversation ending on May 3rd when the State Department eventually just declined to comment. We at the Ingram Angle were, however, able to corroborate details of the January 2016 meeting. However, we did this, of course, using archived Obama White House visitor logs. They're not going to tell us. We have to go to the logs. You can see them on the screen now. They show that the person who many believe to be the whistleblower checked in numerous Ukrainian officials into the White House on January 19, 2016, the day Vogel claims there was a meeting on Burisma and Biden. Also at the meeting were Ukraine's lead anti-corruption prosecutor and the head of the country's anti-corruption bureau, both of whom were there to discuss the complications of Hunter Biden's sweetheart gig. So what happened to that New York Times story about the 2016 meeting? Pretty hot, don't you think? Well, it was never published. We asked Ken Vogel, the reporter, why nothing ever came of it, but he didn't respond. The New York Times director of communications did, however, also refusing to answer our questions about why the story never ran, instead noting that Vogel's request for comment 
was just consistent with their news gathering process. Got it. <laughs> Nothing to see here. The timing of the request and the subsequent squashing of the story are very interesting. Now, let me explain why. Biden announced his candidacy on April 25th, 2019. The exchanges we laid out here in this segment occurred the following week. Mm. So now we have some questions. Number one, why wasn't the whistleblower concerned about Joe Biden overseeing Ukraine policy while his son was cashing in? Was it only... Well, that's obvious. He, she's part of the scam. Troubling when Trump himself tried to get this thing investigated, this entire unsavory deal? Number two, why didn't this story ever run? Did Biden's team manage to put it down? Yeah, well, of course they did. Fearing blowback from his son Hunter's dirty dealings, maybe? There's a reason Adam Schiff and now Chuck Schumer fume, as they did tonight, over the very idea of Hunter Biden testifying. They know in their heart of hearts that Ukrainian corruption reached back all the way to the Obama administration, and they did nothing. Yes, this corruption goes right back to Obama. His testimony would also force the Democrats to admit that their 2020 frontrunner oversaw U.S. policy in Ukraine while his own son was bilking their system for 50 k a month. And they have the audacity to call Trump corrupt. Anyway, now to part two. 24 hours ago, we brought you an explosive story, and judging by the responses we got, well, it seemed to strike a nerve. Last night, the Ingram Angle showed you State Department emails from last year that no one in TV had brought you before. These emails centered on a January 2016 meeting between Obama administration officials and Ukrainian prosecutors about how the efforts to fight corruption in Ukraine might be imperiled by Hunter Biden's ties to Marisma. Might have been a conflict there. Now, remember, all those folks were checked into the White House by the person who many say is the whistleblower who sparked this entire impeachment circus. Well, we kept digging, and tonight we have a new development to share with you. One of the Ukrainians who attended that 2016 White House meeting is a man named Andrei Telezhenko, a political officer in the Ukrainian embassy. Curiously, his name also pops up in a 2017 Politico piece that detailed efforts by Ukrainian officials to undermine Trump's 2016 campaign, written by the same reporter, Ken Vogel, who, after initially pursuing it, didn't write that story about that White House 2016 meeting. Hmm. According to Politico, Telezhenko aided DNC operative Alexandra Chalupa in her mission to hurt Trump's campaign by trying to find connections between Trump, Manafort, and Russia. But according to Telezhenko, he didn't do this willingly. He claims he was forced into helping Chalupa and have her go after Trump. Here's what he told Politico in 2017. We had an order not to talk to the Trump team because he was critical of Ukraine and the government and his critical position on Crimea and the conflict. I was yelled at when I proposed to talk to Trump. The ambassador said not to get involved. Hillary is going to win. Yes, no corruption there. Well, we reached out to the State Department officials included in the May 2019 emails that we revealed last night, and we asked these questions. Do they know why Ken Vogel decided not to publish that story after all? Did he follow up with any other correspondence explaining why he didn't write the story or perhaps with other questions? What was the State Department's focus in that January 2016 meeting with all of those Ukrainian officials? And why did the person that we think is a whistleblower, hmm, why did he arrange this meeting? Why did he arrange this meeting? So the whistleblower is a he. As of this moment, we've received no response to our questions. We, however, are not stopping our call for more documents, the emails, the text messages, the voicemails, anything that sheds light on what certainly looks on the surface to be a concerted effort to save the Bidens from political embarrassment and then hurt President Trump along the way. Yes, it certainly looks that way, but hey, the Democrats, they are not corrupt. 
Anyway, now to part three. Over the past few nights, we've laid out details of a 2016 White House meeting between Obama officials and Ukrainian prosecutors. The Bidens and Burisma were the main topic. Now, we discovered the existence of this meeting in an email chain between State Department staffers and the New York Times reporter Ken Vogel. We obtained those emails exclusively. And examining archived White House vigor vigorous visitor logs, we came across two names that piqued our interest. The first, the person who checked the Ukrainians into the White House the day of the meeting. Hey, oh, that person has been identified by some as the impeachment whistleblower. The second point, another person at the 2016 meeting, Andrei Telezhenko, he worked at the Ukrainian embassy at the time, and as we reported last night, was quoted in a 2017 Politico article, also by Ken Vogel, explaining how he was forced to work with a DNC operative to hurt Trump. Well, Telezhenko saw part two of our investigation last night, and tonight he's decided to speak out. I'm being pressured to hobble Trump's 2016 campaign, he told the Ingram Angle. I was told to work and cooperate with Mrs. Chalupa, a DNC operative, by Ambassador Chali. Chalupa asked me to help her get dirt on presidential candidate Donald Trump. Oh, again, no corruption there. I never coordinated any work with her or the DNC because I did not support the unethical orders to work and assist one party. He also provided these documents, a White House invite, and a schedule of the meeting listing two names. One associated with the whistleblower, whose name we blocked out, and Elizabeth Zentos, both from Obama's NSC. Who would have thought? Telezhenko also told us that while the meeting was touted as a, quote, prosecutor's training program, <clears throat> much of the conversation revolved around the Bidens and Burisma. And it wasn't the Ukrainians who brought up Bidens and Burisma. Telezhenko said the representatives of the DOJ, U.S. Embassy in Kiev, and NSC staff raised the question of the Burisma investigation. Most of the NSC staff were people from Biden's team. Again, who would have thought? Wow. You get this now? Joining me now, Byron York, chief political correspondent for The Examiner, and Sarah Carter, host of the Sarah Carter podcast, both Fox News contributors, and Lee Smith, investigative journalist, author of The Plot Against the President. All right, Sarah, how can Democrats continue to claim the Bidens and Burisma have no relevance to this? Oh, they can't. This is the point. And this is the reason why Adam Schiff doesn't want to call the whistleblower. This is the reason why he doesn't want any more information coming out. Because what we know now is those connections were so deep inside the State Department. And, and by the way, it's not only Ukraine. You hear this coming from other countries with the Obama administration, officials in other countries. I give you an example. In Guatemala, the same thing. Pressure from the State department to do things their way or they will withhold aid so exactly what trump is accused of this is nothing new i think right now we're at the cusp of something really big this is an explosive report laura this is huge it absolutely has to be investigated but who's going to investigate it the doj the senate judiciary well we it, someone should be doing this other than the ingram angle byron this could be the nexus between the whistleblower and the Biden Burisma story, where you have concerns in the Obama White House uh, about Hunter Biden's connections in Ukraine. His father is obviously uh, the vice president. And now we have, we know that the person alleged to be the whistleblower was involved with that. And so it, it makes it very hard. Senators do not want to, Republicans do not want to call witnesses. They don't want any witnesses. But if they had to have a witness, it seems the whistleblower is the one. Because I do not believe it is possible to call for the removal of the president of the United States and say some of the evidence has to say secret. It exactly. We want to convict Trump, but some of the evidence has to say secret. It's, it's just got to be secret. Oh, to invalidate us, a okay. presidential election? Lee Smith, that whistleblower's name, if that's a whistleblower, reported whistleblower, is on every log for that meeting, meaning he checked everyone in from the anti-corruption prosecutor in the Ukraine, where it looks like they were discussing what to do about the Bidens and what to do about this corruption in, in, uh, in, in Burisma. That was the focus and it was billed as something generic so as not to raise eyebrows. Right. Well, another key point, which you have in the statement uh, from Mr. Telezhenko, is that they're looking for information on candidate Donald Trump. At that point, that seems to 
cut right to the heart of the impeachment issue here. If their complaint is that uh, the president was looking for information on Biden. What we're really looking at is, in its sources, they were collecting dirt on candidate Trump in 2016. Exactly. Left-wing projection all the way. They're accusing Trump of doing exactly what they did in 2016. Now, folks, I don't think Laura Ingram is finished there. There's a lot more to the story to come. The Republicans are really picking up on the story as we speak. It looks like the Bidens are going to go down in a screaming heap after this trial is over.